This video is going to look at a new type of aggregation scalar expression that we've added to Adaptable um, and that looks at what's called quantile aggregations. Um, so it's quite a fairly advanced use case, um, but one which has been asked for by a number of users, kind of particularly on the buy side. Um, so just to give a bit of background, the idea between an aggregated scalar expression is it's a query that you provide to Adaptable and it will run against aggregated, i.e. lots and lots of rows and groups of data, and it will return a scalar value, so it will return a single value. It's typically used in calculated columns, but there are a couple of other use cases. So um, just to get a bit of background, for instance, this is a very simple um, basic scalar aggregation function, which is the sum of the PNL. So it gets um, the sum of all the um, PNL columns in the grid and returns that as a single value. Or well, here, it looks at all the price columns and it returns the smallest because it's min price. Um, you can um, group them as well. So, for instance, in this example here, we're looking at the sum of all the PNL, but we're grouping it by currency. So, if you were to have this as a calculated column, depending on which currency that um, row was in, you were to get the sum of the PNL for that row's currency. Another type of um, aggregation scalar is cumulative. This is for where you want to do running totals. It's a video in its own right, but very simply, as you can see, if you accumulate over um, a value, you can kind of give it um, the order in which it should do it. So in this example here, we said you want to accumulate the sum of the PNLs and we want to do it according to trade dates. The grid doesn't need to be physically ordered by trade date, but it will work it out. So it would take the first trade date, it would give you the PNL, and then the next row would give you the previous and that one, um, et cetera, et cetera, kind of giving you, as I say, running total over time. So the new type of aggregation we've introduced is called quantile aggregation. I said this is all in the adaptable docs. It's all online. And this allows you essentially to group values into buckets. Again, it's going to be primarily used for calculated columns. And it's a simple, um, it's simple to create, but very powerful. There's just one keyword, which is quant. And what that does is it takes a, a value, typically a column, and the number of buckets you want to divide that into. So in this example here, we're saying we want to put PNL into 100 buckets known as percentiles, or in this next example, we want to put the price column into four buckets known as quartiles. And then you can additionally group that. So in this example here, we've got quant PNL five group by currency, which means we're going to put the PNL into five different buckets, but we're going to create five buckets for each currency. So however many currencies you have in the grid, there's going to be five buckets for each, and then the PNL will be put into those um, buckets accordingly. Or in this case, you've got price into 10. So it's deciles, again, grouped by counterparty. So each counterparty will have 10 groups. Um, we have a demo. It's on our um, demo site. What I'll do is I'll open it up so we can kind of understand it better. Um, and what we've done is we've just taken 100 random tickers, we've assigned them to a type, and we've given each ticker a value. And to keep things very, very simple, we've just made the value um, from 1 to 100 um, in order, so it makes it much easier to see the groups. And we've created, um, it, well, let's look at these four first. So we've created four calculated columns. You can see them here. So we created one called quartile, which puts the quant into four buckets. The next calculated column was quintile, where we put it into five. The next one was decile, where we put it into 10. And the last was percentile, where we put it into 100, which in this case would obviously be one, because there's 100 rows, would be one per bucket. And you can very easily see how it works. So here's the quartile, so it goes up to 25. The quintile, the first bucket goes up to 20. In a decile, obviously it goes up to 10. And in a percentile, there's one per for it. So by the time you get to the hundredth, it's in the fourth quartile, the fifth quintile, tenth decile, hundredth percentile. So it's all very, very simple. You can also, as I say, do grouping. If you look at this last calculator column, we've um, put, we've created three buckets. We've done a value into three, but we've grouped them by type. So for each type, we will create three buckets. And that's what we have here. And in fact, we've also um, added a format column because you can completely format this. So we've added a format column. Um, to kind of display the word bucket in front of the value, which is what happens here. You can probably see it better if we sort by type. 
And now you can see here, for instance, within the consumer, we have three buckets and we've got three buckets for finance. And of course, everything is live. So if I change this value from nine to 90, you can see it now jumps to the fourth quartile, the fifth quintile, the ninth decile, the 90th percentile, obviously, and it jumps into the third bucket for the type. Um, so let's now create one ourselves to get a, a sense of how easy it is to do it. So we will create a new calculated column. It's an aggregated scalar. So it's going to have one of these. And in fact, we're going to use quant. And as I say, it takes two values. The first is the value that's going to be calculated. It's going to be evaluated, which in our case is the value column. And the second is the number of buckets. So we will just do two. We'll have like a top and bottom half. Um, and we will call that um, sets. And let's call that sets and there we are here's our calculated column um, if we go into the layout and if we edit the layout and we go into columns let's make that visible and now you can see in fact let's um, sort by id you can see we've got our two sets in fact let's sort by value better um, and we've got our two sets. Let's now, um, in fact, I know what we can do now, obviously, is we can, we can format that, we can do um, other things to it. So in fact, we can even use this set itself in a calculated column. So let, I'll show you what I mean. Let's create a new calculated column, but this one will be scalar. And you, let's use our set. So we will say if sets is equal to one, oops, one, then let's return top, otherwise, Let's return bottom, okay? And now we will call this half, let's call that half. And it knows it's a string, it gives you other properties as well. There we are, there's our calculated column. Um, let's make it visible. And there we are, you've got your top half and you've got your bottom half. And obviously, again, if you change the values, if I change this from one to 100, coming it's in the top half, and then, oh, it's before to it, obviously, but there we are, it's now moved down to the bottom half. That's the one we just changed here. So there we are. That's um, quantiles. It's a nice way of grouping live data into buckets, as many as you want. You can choose how many you want. You can also group, as we've seen here. And it's live as your data changes. Obviously, um, the, uh, the calculator column updates in real time. As always, thanks for watching. This is just really one of many, many features in Adaptable QL, our very powerful expression language. So if you need to query data or manage or manipulate data or create calculated columns and you're not yet using Adaptable, take a look because the chances are we can provide functionality which will significantly um, enhance your user experience and um, also um, boost productivity and efficiency. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please do get in touch.